الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبع Respected fellow presenters Brothers and sisters there in Britain Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum I am honored to be invited to address you for the first time with a live broadcast to Britain it's 4.30 in the morning here in Malaysia as we direct attention to the slavery which now lies ahead of us we are in a position to recognize that coming slavery because of the Quran and because of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam a branch of knowledge which is known as Islamic eschatology or ilmu akhiru zaman we are already as we attempt to bring clarity about reality today we are already in a position to discern a monetary collapse which is already taking place and that this monetary collapse is in turn going to result in an economic collapse as the monetary and economic collapse takes place take place there will be a spectacular rise in the cost of living many people will lose their wealth and the poor will now be enslaved the poor masses will now be enslaved and uh, we have questions for which we need answers why is this going to take place why is it taking place at this time and how is it taking place <laughs> We wrote Jerusalem in the Quran 10 years ago and in that book we turn to the Quran and we turn to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to seek to understand the reality of the world today the reality of political events economic events social and cultural events religious events so spectacularly and so mysteriously unfolding in the world today if we are a people with intellect with a rational faculty should we not use that rational faculty to seek to understand what's happening in the world today I ask you is it something sufficient would it be satisfactory to the one who created us from a drop of sperm and gave us eyes and gave us ears and gave us hearts with which to understand and then gave us the Quran and gave us Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that we should close our eyes to the world today and that we should that we can simply go to the masjid and perform our salat and conform with all the external requirements of religion and that Allah will be pleased with that and he would accept our ibadah when he sent the Quran he sent the Quran for a people who would think and ponder and reflect and tonight we seek to ponder and to reflect 
in in the ahadith of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, we were introduced to a number of subjects pertaining to the last age. And amongst them was that supreme subject of a false messiah who would seek to rule the world while impersonating the true messiah. We were told that he would live on earth when he is released by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 40 days, a day like a year, a day like a month, a day like a week. And all his days, meaning all the rest of his days, like your days. And we argued in Jerusalem in the Quran that when he was released on earth, in a day which is like a year it is from the island of Britain the island of Tamim Dari. this was our opinion that he launched his effort it is from that island that he launched his effort to eventually rule the world from Jerusalem and that resulted in Britain becoming the first of his ruling states and the world experienced Pax Britannica but I noticed that in order for Britain to achieve the status of ruling state in the world Britain had to do something very important in the world of money and that is that the sterling pound which used to be a gold coin the sterling pound had to be transformed into a piece of paper that the Bank of England used to issue the sterling pound became the international currency and then we noticed between the first and the second world wars that the United States replaced Britain as the ruling state in the world, the second of the Jaws ruling states. And that the US dollar replaced the sterling pound as the international currency. And we came to the conclusion 15 years ago, because of Islamic eschatology, we came to the conclusion that we are now located at that moment in time when the second ruling state was in decline and that the US dollar would collapse and that a third ruling state would emerge the third and last of the Jaws ruling states and that the US dollar would be replaced by some other money this was a conclusion that we came to 15 years ago and it was not a conclusion to which we arrived because of an analysis of monetary economics oh no nor did we have an angel whispering into our ears or a jinn we are not prophets of God no we came to that conclusion because of our study of Islamic eschatology or the ilm akhir zaman and tonight, as we invite you to join with us in a search for clarity about reality, we warn you that it is not sufficient to put on the clothes of the sunnah, not sufficient to have the beard, which I have and I have the clothes of the sunnah, not sufficient to go to the masjid and come back home and go to sleep. That's not enough. We need to go to the Quran and to Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to be able to understand the world today. We need to study. There is a world of knowledge between those who have, there's a world of difference between those who have knowledge and those who don't. Are they equal? Ask the Quran those who possess knowledge and those who don't innama yatazakkaru ulul albab no those alone can be admonished 
who are possessed of wisdom and knowledge of knowledge and so we direct attention now to the impending monetary collapse the US dollar is not collapsing by itself by accident oh no this is a controlled incremental demolition of the US dollar because those who are working on behalf of the Dajjal no longer need the United States as their ruling state. No. And they no longer need the US dollar. Indeed, they no longer need the bogus and utterly fraudulent and haram paper currencies with which we have been inundated these last 70, 80 years. They're now moving to a new world. And it is a world in which they're going to attempt to get Israel to replace the United States as a new ruling state in the world. I think that's going to be difficult. How can you get little Israel to rule the world? That's a tall order. And we need to put on our thinking caps, we Muslims, we who say that we have the Quran, we who say that we follow Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, we need to put on our thinking caps to seek to understand what is the strategy with which Israel will seek to replace the United States of America as the next ruling state in the world. At the heart of that strategy, I would like to suggest to you tonight, at the heart of that strategy is the monetary and economic collapse that we are now going to witness. That monetary and economic collapse is taking place because of something called riba. I have been teaching the subject of riba for I think about 20-25 years now. <laughs> Mine was one of the lonely voices in all the years that I lived in the United States of America teaching the subject of riba. And I found that 99% of those who came to listen to me either had no knowledge of the subject or had a very defective knowledge of the subject. And when I inquired why, I realized that the reason was because no one was teaching the subject. And when I attempted to teach the subject, I found that the doors of the masjid were closed to me. You can come in the masjid and you can talk about salat. You can talk about sunnah clothing. You can talk about the bed. You can talk about being virtuous and staying away from sin. But don't talk about riba. Oh, is that so? Well, let me introduce you to riba in the Quran. <laughs> Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is delivering the khutbatul wida, the farewell sermon from Arafat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent down revelation declaring, This day have we perfected for you. This day have I perfected for you, your deen. This day have I completed for you, my favor unto you. This day have I ordained for you Islam as your deen, your way of life. And so we thought that the job was finished now. Nothing more from Allah. But no, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu in a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari the last revelation to come down in the Quran was the revelation on riba in Surah Al-Baqarah verses 279 to 281 and in that revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared war did you hear that? He declared war on the moneylender. 
and Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam declared war on the money lender and I ask of you if Allah and his messenger are waging war on the money lender waging war on those who are taking riba waging war on an economy based on riba and all that you do is to go to the masjid and go back home go to the masjid and go back home go to the masjid and go back home what is Allah going to do with you? is it not time for us to deliver a wake-up call to those who are sleeping in wonderland riba is by far the most dangerous weapon with which Dajjal is attacking us there's only one weapon more dangerous than riba and that is the weapon of shirk and in riba there is also shirk if you take a piece of paper and you print a picture on that piece of paper and then you put a number on it and remember I have studied monetary economics I know what I'm talking about I studied monetary economics at two universities I know about the Bretton Woods Accord I know about the International Monetary Fund and about its articles of agreement which have made haram but Allah made halal and whoever makes haram what Allah makes halal has committed shirk and whoever accepts that and follows it has also committed shirk that's surah to tawbah of the quran the international monetary fund has made the use of gold as money haram and that is shirk if you take a piece of paper in order to replace the gold that you have made haram the gold dinar that allah had made halal the silver dirham that Allah made halal that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and all the prophets of Allah used all of them and when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns Jesus the son of Mary when he returns it is gold dinar and silver dirham that he's going to use and Israel knows that Israel knows that gold and silver is kosher and Israel is going to be using gold and silver tomorrow as money but Dajjal takes the gold dinar out of the market and replaces it with a piece of paper and he prints a picture on it and he puts a number on it and then he assigns to that piece of paper an entirely fictitious value is he not attempting to create wealth out of nothing only Allah creates wealth out of nothing and is it not an act of shirk yes it most certainly is an act of shirk they put that paper money there because the value of money is no longer in the money the value of money is now outside of the money and it therefore can be manipulated by you know who including of course George Soros and therefore they can cause the value of that money to fall when they want it to fall the United States US dollar began at 20 US dollars being equivalent to the value of one ounce of gold one ounce of gold that's a lot of gold one ounce of gold and then it moved from 20 to 35 if you go to my book the prohibition of riba in the quran and sunnah uh, and incidentally we are now establishing our own bookstore uh, it will be imranhussein.com the website is imranhussein.org so if you go to my book the prohibition of riba in the quran and sunnah you'll find the story of how the US government ripped off the American people in 1933 I believe it was when they manipulated the value of the paper and from 20 it fell to 35 and the American people lost 41 percent of their wealth in the Quran Allah commands 
Three times he made the command. Do not diminish the value of people's wealth and property wages, their sweat. Don't rip them off. And this was a rip-off. This is haram. And then from 35 in 1971, September 71, when they tore up Bretton Woods, it fell to 40. And then in 1973, when the war took place, it fell from 40 to 160. 400% collapse in the value of the US dollar. And now it is somewhere in the vicinity of 1700. It's already collapsed. They're just keeping it alive with some kind of a pump, a machine. It is in, it is in the, the, the uh, what you call that, intensive care unit in some hospital. And as soon as the attack on Iran takes place that we are expecting, because they've been broadcasting from the mountain top day for a night that they're going to attack Iran, the first thing that's going to happen if and when Iran is attacked by Israel is that within hours the US dollar is going to start tumbling because the price of oil is going to start rising. Today oil is now money. Oil is now gold because the US dollar has been able to ride high all these years because it was locked to gold thanks to the Arab OPEC countries. Thanks to OPEC, the US dollar remained flying high all these years because oil was gold. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam did tell us. He said in Akhir zaman that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. There are those who say, if Allah and his messenger and if the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the early Muslims, the Salaf, if they, the Aslaf, did not interpret anything other than literally, then we have no right to interpret it other than literally. And so they are waiting for a mountain of the metal. We say to them, brother, you've got a long time to wait because this is religious symbolism. That when Allah's messenger spoke about the mountain of gold, he was not speaking about the metal. No. And when he spoke about the donkey, the flying donkey, with his hair stretched out wide, on which Dajjal was riding, he's speaking not about a donkey, but about the aircraft. And he's speaking here not about the metal, a mountain of the metal, but he's speaking about the black gold which has already come out of the river Euphrates and the Persian Gulf, and it's oil oil, black oil. That oil has been functioning as gold for all these years. It is that oil which has functioned as gold which has kept the US dollar riding high. And now the time has come when they no longer need it. And so as the price of oil goes up, the US dollar will tumble and I am anticipating, and of course, I can be wrong. I am anticipating that the US dollar will now be demonetized and will, replace, will be replaced by another money, which will be a fraction of the value of the present dollar. As the US dollar tumbles and is demonetized, I understand what's going to happen in the rest of the world. All the weak currencies, you know, there are hard currencies and then there are the rest. The rest are going to be in a state of panic. Panic. And uh, people are going to be trying to dump their paper, their Indonesian rupee and the Pakistani rupee and the Bangladeshi taka and their Egyptian pound as fast as they can because of something called runaway inflation. 
most of mankind, the poor masses, are going to lose whatever they had. The cost of living is about to increase dramatically, spectacularly. And that cost of living accompanied by the decline in wealth, an increase in poverty, is the script which spells economic slavery. I believe that it is happening on this, at this particular time because it will facilitate Israel's quest to rule the world. That the poor masses around the world, most of them Muslims, the poor masses around the world will be immobilized because of extreme poverty and destitution and unable to launch any kind of a um, threat to Israel. In addition, of course, to the economic and monetary slavery that's coming, about which the Prophet warned us, because did he not say to Angel Gabriel, Jibra'il alayhi salam, that one of the signs of the last day is that the slave woman will give birth to her mistress if it's a baby boy the baby boy will not rule over his mother who is a slave but if it's a baby girl the baby girl will rule over her mother indicating a tomorrow which is to come in Akhiru Zaman when women will rule the world indicating that there is going to be a spectacular collapse in the birth of baby boys indicating that women who have lost their fertility and also femininity by the way because of the Jal's feminist revolution who are now infertile would have to turn to surrogate parenting surrogate motherhood to get babies and the cheapest one of all would be the slave woman and so we have in this hadith an indication to us the day slavery at the end of history what do we do how do we respond remember this is not the only strategy to be clear about reality we must not only be clear about the economic and monetary reality but also the political reality a united nations organization with a security council which declares that it is al akbar that you have to obey the security council that there is no law there is no law higher than the law of the security council so what about Allah's law? What about Allah's authority? What about Allah's sovereignty? This is shirk. This is political shirk. And that United Nations organization with its security council which is dominated by the Zionists is now moving towards enforcing world government. And when Israel takes over from the United States of America and a man emerges in, in Israel who will not be Mr. President, no, not Mr. Prime Minister, no, but His Majesty the King. Why? Because Nabi Dawood alayhi salam was a king. And Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam was a king. And so Dajjal will have to claim that he is a king as well. When that state of Israel takes over from the United States of America as a new ruling state in the world it will not only exercise economic dominion but also political dominion over the rest of mankind there is much more to the subject but my time is coming to a close and I know you have lots and lots of questions to ask and incidentally, if you send your questions by email, I can perhaps be able to read the questions right here on my, my monitor. Um, there is also a military component or military aspect to this matter. And that is that 
in the same way that Britain was led to the verge of defeat and the United States had to intervene to save Britain from defeat in the First World War and again in the Second World War in the same way that the United States took over from Britain because Britain was led to the verge of defeat similarly I am anticipating that the United States is now being led by its nose and the nose of course is Congress and the President of the United States and those who control the armed forces cannot overrule Congress. Congress is leading them by the nose. The United States armed forces are being led by the nose to a, sit a situation in which they are going to face military defeat and only Israel will be able to intervene and hence, hence I am of the opinion that that trap is somewhere in the Arab world somewhere close to Israel perhaps in Saudi Arabia and when Israel intervenes to save the United States from defeat it will then be clear to all of mankind that the United States is no longer the ruling state in the world and that Israel has now replaced the United States but our subject is actually the economic and monetary slavery that now stares us in the face, the poor masses around the world. What do we do? Let us spend the last few minutes that we have in seeking to respond to this reality that now confronts us and perhaps to be able to wake up those who are sleeping in wonderland, just going to the masjid and going back home, going to the masjid and going back home and you're listening to them and it's the same thing over and over and over again like a machine like a machine how to wake up these people the answer is if you abandon a sunnah and you become conscious of the fact that you have abandoned a sunnah then you must make tawbah and you must return to the sunnah is that so difficult to answer? Even a schoolboy can tell you that. And it is a sunnah to use the dinar and dirham as money. And it is also in the Quran. The dinar is in the Quran. And the dirham is in the Quran. Kindly read my book entitled The Gold Dinar and Silver Dirham Islam and the Future of Money. These books are all on my website. They can be downloaded free of charge. If you have abandoned a sunnah, then kindly make tawbah and struggle to recover the sunnah. Even Tablik Jamaat could understand that, can't they? If you have abandoned a sunnah, then make tawbah and then struggle to restore the sunnah the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam that you will make an alliance with Rome Rome are Christians aren't they but Rome is not Rome in Italy Rome is not the Anglo-American Israeli alliance no Qatar may believe that and those scholars of Islam who love Qatar may believe that. But you and I know that Rome is the Byzantine, Eastern Christian Orthodox Empire. And that Byzantine Empire had its capital in Constantinople. That is Rome. And that Rome is today located in Russia and in Eastern Europe. And we are going to make an alliance with Rome. I want to suggest that an alliance with Rome includes a monetary alliance and therefore we should be at the forefront now reaching out to Russia reaching out to China which is an ally of Russia reaching out to Eastern Europe to get them to join with us in restoring gold and silver coins as money that I believe is the road to success for us. In addition to that macro strategy of reaching out to Rome and indeed who are those who are reaching out to Rome today for alliance? Is it Saudi Arabia? 
the Sunni state of Saudi Arabia? No, it's not. Is it uh, Qatar and Jordan and <laughs> Dubai and uh, these places? No, it's not. Who is reaching out to Russia today for an alliance? I am not Shia. I'm Sunni. But it is Shia Iran which is reaching out to Russia. And thank Allah, it's not only Shia Iran, but also Sunni Pakistan, which is now re reaching out to Russia, having realized that Dajjal is dangerous. And it is only a matter of time before the Turkish Muslims take off the veils from off their eyes and realize that their government is hoodwinking winking them. And that the Turkish Muslims also make an effort to get out of NATO. I believe it's going to lead to civil war in Turkey in order to get rid of NATO. And that civil war in Turkey is what's going to lead to the alliance with Rum and Turkey. And so that's the macro strategy. But our micro strategy must also be articulated. And that is wherever in the world we can do it. Withdraw. Withdraw from the cities. Withdraw from the cities. Wherever you are in the world, withdraw from the cities. The Jal wants you in the city because he can control you more easily if you are in the city. And that is the explanation for the emergence of mega cities in the world today with 20 million people. Wake up! Get clarity about reality today. This is not happening by accident. This is the Charles plan. And so when they're moving in that direction all to the city, we move in the opposite direction. Is that so difficult to understand? And so we move to the countryside. And we build micro markets. And in our markets, with Allah's blessed name, we seek to restore the Sunnah money. Gold and silver coins as money, the dinar and dirham. And if we cannot do that, then we can use commodities as money. For they used dates as money, didn't they? In Medina. But the one thing we will not do is that we're not going to continue, inshallah, using this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money. The second thing we can do is if we have money take that money and buy land. Take that money and buy animals because with land and with animals we can survive. We can provide food, milk, meat for our children, for our families. If we are dependent on the rest of the world for food and for water, we're going to be enslaved. In fact, there are going to be riots tomorrow for food and water. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, you'll find this hadith in my book entitled One Jamat, One Amir, which is on my website. He said, if you have land, hold on to your land. He said, if you have animals, hold on to your animals. And the man asks, O Messenger of Allah, what should we do if we have neither land nor animals? And he said, sharpen your sword, because you're going to have to fight your way out of that anarchy. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless us to have eyes with which to see and understand the world today. Ears with which to hear the cries of the oppressed. So we do not eat biryani and then go to sleep and do nothing about it. Hearts with which to understand because a heart which has faith in it would be a heart which would seek to recognize truth. If we do not understand the world today, we do not have truth. Only the Quran can explain the world today. Only Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam can explain the world today. I thank you brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
China is an ally of Russia. Russia is the dominant partner, so we deal with Russia rather than with China. When the Prophet والسلام, told us that you will make an alliance with Rome, the implication is that the Russian-led alliance will not submit to Dajjal eventually. That the Russian-led alliance therefore would not submit to Israel as a ruling state. Russia will not bend her knee to Israel and therefore China also will not bend her knee to Israel. The implication is that there is going to be therefore rivalry between the two. The Zionist alliance, the Anglo-American-Israeli alliance on the one hand and the Russian-led alliance on the other. This is eventually going to lead to nuclear war because Russia will not submit to Israel. But they on the other hand, the Zionists are pursuing a pig-headed obsession to rule the world and therefore to rule over Russia and China as well. They simply cannot get out of that obsession. And so we are heading towards nuclear war. And in nuclear war, it is the cities, the cities, which are going to be first destroyed. Those who live in the cities are going to be incinerated. I was of the opinion that perhaps that nuclear war is about 20 or 25 years away from now. I am afraid I have bad news. I think I'm wrong. <laughs> yes, I think I'm wrong. I believe that the nuclear war is sooner rather than later. Why? I believe that Israel does not mind at all provoking nuclear war. No, she doesn't mind. If nuclear war will get rid of millions and billions of people and bring about a substantial reduction in the world population. Amongst those that Israel would like to see eliminated are Arabs. But the hadith of the Prophet is that the Arabs are going to be wiped out by plague. There's an essay on my website on uh, swine flu plague. Uh, please read that essay because the relevant hadith are in that essay. The Arabs are going to be wiped out by plague. You are most vulnerable if you are in the cities. I think that wiping out of the Arabs by plague is going to be with sometime within the next five years. I see no reason why. I see absolutely no reason why I should not offer an opinion about a time frame. Particularly when I emphasize that I can be wrong. When I offer an opinion concerning time frame. At least I force you to think that we are not 500 years away from it. Huh? So why the objections? If you are in the cities of the Arab world, if you are in Cairo, you are most vulnerable when the plague attack hits. And so if you move out of the cities into the remote countryside, there is more security for you. But I want to direct attention to the ayah which is in Surah Al-Isra in which Nabi, in which the Prophet, uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and he says, بَعَدْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِن مِّن قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَرِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَصْتُورًا and not a single town or city will escape. They are all going to be destroyed. Or punish those which escape destruction would be punished with terrible punishment. And so that nuclear warfare that's coming perhaps is the means through which this destruction will take place. 
And Russia is not going to bow to Israel. And as a consequence, Russia is going to respond with nuclear weapons when attacked. I believe that's the role that Russia has to play. I can be wrong. Remember that I can be wrong. I believe that they are going to be phasing out paper money. Because paper money has already done the job it was designed to do, meaning to rip off mankind and reduce part of mankind, particularly the world of Islam, to poverty and destitution and re bring about a massive transfer of wealth, an unjust transfer of wealth from the masses around the world, the non-European masses, to Europe to those who gave us the world of paper money. And this is going to be beneficial, of course, to Israel. But the banking system will operate more efficiently. The banking system will be able to take better control of the world and of governments in the world. If all of money in the money system of the world becomes electronic money, and therefore, I believe the sterling pound, the paper sterling pound, has a very insignificant future ahead of it. And that it is the electronic pound, or perhaps it's going to be one world currency. They don't need all of these currencies. There's going to be one world currency, like there's going to be one world government. It is the electronic money which will take over from the paper money. My last comment is, what will Allah do to a people who live in wonderland, who are sleeping in a world of slumber and bliss, just going to the masjid and going back home, going to the masjid and going back home, when the masjid itself is built with money, that is paper money, that is riba, will Allah accept salat in a building built with riba money and declared to be a masjid? Next question, please. I would leave Britain and get out of Britain without regard for consequences. Because my first duty is not to my husband, not to my children, and not to my parents. My first duty is to Allah and to His Messenger. When I show backbone, backbone made out of steel, and I leave, and I go to a place of greater security and safety, and this is called Hijra, I make Hijra, then Allah in His kindness can open the doors of mercy to me, and my children may eventually join me, and then my husband himself may have a change of his heart, and join me. But if I remain where I am, nothing will change. Surely Allah does not change the condition of a people until they, the people, using Allah's guidance, take the initiative to change their own condition. That's my answer. Yes, I totally agree with that comment. I totally agree with it. I would like to, now to, to further elaborate on that hadith. The Prophet said والسلام, that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. If you are persuaded that it is a mountain of the metal which is going to come, because the Aslaf never spoke about anything other than a literal interpretation. They never understood it other than literally. Oh, that's the evidence you say there is. Then you are entitled to remain for that mountain of gold as you are entitled to remain for the flying donkey. However, we look at it differently and we are entitled to the freedom to do that. We consider this to be religious symbolism. You are free to defer with us. Why the boxing gloves over this issue? We say that it's not a mountain of gold, it's a black gold. And that black gold, the, the oil has already functioned and has already been functioning as gold to keep the US dollar alive and flying high. 
But he went on to say that mankind will fight over that goal. And 99 out of every 100 will die. But he also said that the believers should not touch that goal. If our interpretation is correct, the answer is that the believers should not touch that oil. And we are about to understand why he said that. Because the oil is a rope around your neck. They have given us that oil as the oil with which our transportation operates now. We don't use horses anymore and donkeys and mules that Allah gave us and it's in the Quran, Allah speaks about it in the Quran but we have abandoned what Allah gave us and we now use mechanized transport which run on oil and aeroplanes on oil and ships on oil everything in transport is oil so if you don't have oil you come to a standstill there are going to be riots agriculture today is dependent on oil and fertilizers Industry, manufacturing dependent on oil. The whole economy is dependent on oil. And if you don't have the oil, you have to get it from outside. And they can take control of that oil. Notice that they've taken control of oil wherever in the world oil was discovered. Look at history. Look back at history these last 100 years and ask yourself why? have they made sure that they've taken control of oil wherever in the world oil existed it's only a matter of time for Chavez it's only a matter of time for Evo Morales in Bolivia Chavez in Venezuela because they want control of the oil why the answer is when they have total control of the oil and they bring down the world of paper money and they bring down the economy and runaway inflation, prices rising, cost of living increasing, poverty increasing. That's the time. You won't be able to afford to buy the oil. And if you don't buy the oil, there's going to be riots in your country. Watch it, Pakistan. How do you get the oil? Answer. You got to bow down and worship Dajjal, meaning you got to submit to Israel. That is why he said, don't touch the oil. So I agree with that uh, question about the okay. likelihood of the Straits of Hormuz being closed and rising prices of oil and so on in consequence of an attack on Iran. Yes, next question. It is the Quran to which you must now all turn. The Quran is not just uh, <laughs> a book whose pages you turn and you recite. The Quran is the word of Allah. And the word of Allah is uh, a divine attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word of Allah is a divine attribute, the kalam of Allah. You must love the Quran. You must love the Quran. You must constantly recite the Quran. If you cannot recite the Quran in Arabic, stop what you're doing and go and learn to recite the Quran in Arabic. You should try to recite the Quran every day. And the best time to recite the Quran is at the time of Fajr, before the Salat or after the Salat. You must recite the Quran cover to cover. Cover to cover. Even if you don't understand what you're reciting, understanding will come later. And when you have started to recite the Quran, you must also study the Quran. There's a methodology for studying the Quran, and I've explained that methodology several times in my lectures. The Quran is nur, and you will not be able to see unless Allah puts nur in your heart. And the major vehicle through which nur will come to you is through the Quran. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is the teacher of the Qur'an. And so it is to him you must go, that he may teach you the Qur'an. But you must love the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And loving the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is loving his sunnah. It is not love for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that you should adopt a cosmetic version of Islam. 
I spoke previously about Protestant Islam. I'm now speaking about cosmetic Islam, part-time Islam. That you take part of the Sunnah and you abandon the other part. No, you must adopt the whole Sunnah. And the whole Sunnah involves that is very hard, resisting oppression in the world. There's more oppression in the world today than ever before. And oppression is constantly increasing. So love the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam and follow his Sunnah. And through the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam you will get Noor. Without Noor you cannot see. And finally there's Salat. Salat is Noor. And it is in Salat that you can make Mi'raj. It is on Salat that you can travel. Travel beyond this world to worlds that exist beyond, to the Samawat. And partake, not to partake really, but to penetrate and to experience reality beyond material reality. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless you in that effort. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ampunan kepadaku, ampunkanlah dosaku Sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa-dosa besar Tuhanku, aku tidak layak untuk syurgamu Tetapi aku tidak pula sanggup Sanera kamu dari itu kurniakanlah ampunan kepadaku ampunkanlah dosaku sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa dosa besar ilah ilah tulil firdausi Oh. Uh -huh.